how would you describe the music of Fontaine? Well, it's basically, you have this up over here, and meanwhile this over here, and, and they're coming together like this, but there's something back here going, kick, 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 kick. See, you know, I wouldn't describe it. No. I would say, Oh, that's probably... Yeah, I like that, that actually. more accurate. Yes. It's, it's a little more on the money. That's... <laughs> you're joking, right? Yeah. Okay. So you do want another beer? Yeah. No. Nice. Thank you, my good man. Cheers. Octopi, UFOs, spectacular particles, doctors, cornbread and or kerosene, and Newark International Airport. What do all these have in common? If you answered Fontaine, well, good for you, because you've earned yourself a gold star, old boy. Fontaine's genre-defying, sonic style of psychedelic rock melts the most unsuspecting of faces and leaves said transmogrified flesh asking one question. Who are these wankers? My name is At Synth Machine, and I play keyboards for Fontaine. You rock! Hi, my name is um, Tom Howie, actually, and I play drums for um, Fontaine. Okay, we getting paid for this shit? Absolutely. All right, yeah, I'm Neezer, I play rhythm guitar. Uh, my name is White Chocolate Fontaine, and I play the bass. You mean bass? Uh, well, it's spelled B-A-S-S, -S, so it's bass, right? Bass. Oh. I, I play bass. Hi, Bubba Fontaine. Um, <clears throat> recording engineer. Pool heater builder. Guitar player. It wasn't until decades after a slew of chance encounters and one night stands by their mother, Beatrice Fontaine, most often referred to as Rita, that the boys met up once again at a family reunion at the Stuckies of Vienna. A pop song came through the speakers overhead. It was Carly Rae Jepsen's Call Me Maybe. It sparked a conversation that would be the beginning of a musical journey through space and time, hand in hand with the alchemy of wankery. Their separate paths had diverged in reverse as they felt Rita's posthumous nudge bringing them together on a mission to counterbalance the frequencies of ineptitude of modern radio. Hang on, so is it one e and a two e and a and three and and, or is it one e and a two e and a and three and? Humor me. Mm -hmm. Take me through, if you will, what it means when in the song Cornbread and Kerosene mm -hmm. you sing the line. My mama likes to feed me my cornbread. Right. She mixes it with beans. Yes. Is it about what's well? A pyrotechnic plan? Tom. It's a little bit of everything. Uncle Bucky in Tennessee likes to mix uh, chewing tobacco and cornflakes. And uh, our mama thought that was a really good idea, so. We have a family tradition of taking grossly inappropriate things and eating them. Uh, Bucky is an air traffic controller of good repute. Yes, he is. Very smart man, but enjoys his chewing tobacco and cornflakes. <laughs> Most air traffic controllers are of good repute right up until they are. <laughs> well, yeah, that's, that's true. That's true. I bet he was actually probably in the control room with his with his his, his uh, chew and corn cornflakes landing planes. Oh, that's 
Jackson. Good old Uncle Buckminster. So you want a joke? Let's see here. How many guitar players does it take to screw in a light bulb? Twenty. One to screw the light bulb in, nineteen more to tell forget it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't talk. Today. So, yeah. You're Rita's brother. Yeah. This yeah. boy's uncle. Rita. Yeah, I'm Rita's brother. Yeah. All different biological fathers. Fathers. Correct. Fathers. Multiple fathers. Yes, fathers. Tell me a little more about her. Well, she was great, you know. Very creative and funky and free spirited, genuine gal, you know. But she got around. You know, none of them ever met their dads. You know, it was just wham, bam, thank you, man. Oh, look, here's a kid. You know, but uh, I met a few of them. <clears throat> Nisa's dad, I liked him. He was a Salvadori Smith. They called him Smitty Smith. And most people called him Southside Lou. You know, he's from South Side of Chicago, you know. It's a weird place. Boy, I'll tell you something, he could play the saxophone. Gosh. You know, it was very, there was a lot of airspace in Chicago. It wasn't terribly dysfunctional with the band, you know, and a lot of other people, but boy, I'll tell you something, that band, <clears throat> they were, they were good, you know. Not, not dysfunctional, you know, really funky, you know, they were awesome. We're going to play a game of word association. Cool. Captain. Crunch. Caveman. Crunch? That's lame, man. Give me a break. What a d Easy. Easy, boys. YMCA. That wasn't the word. Tacos. You didn't say anything. Sorry, man. I'm getting hungry. What time is it, anyway? It's probably 11.30. Focus. Focus. Pocus. Crocus. Plastic. Tweezers. The musical emanations that ooze from the pores of these fine gentlemen may not be for everyone, but take it from me and my authoritatively wise British accent, which definitively suggests my expertise in practically anything that I may be talking about. Example, in the farthest reaches of Ecuador, there exists an ancient tribe of albino little people that operates technologically as if the year were 653 AD. You see? Totally made up that. But you bought it, right? But I'm not making this up. Fontaine is the sound of yesteryear's future's past. The ethereal solution to the riddle of the sound of one hand clapping applause for a tree in the forest that no one is around to hear and a band that will continue to float above the blood. Which is the song about Dina? Uh, that would be the transfer. Leo, did that get misspelled? I thought it was Rio. No, man, it's, uh, it's Leo with an L, not an R. Mm -hmm. What the f***, man? I thought Plastic Tweezers was gonna be on here. What does tracksuit lifestyle really mean to you? Who is Baba Fontaine? Does a bear shit in the woods? <laughs> is the Pope a Catholic?
You know what? Fuckers are all right. <laughs>